Hi there, boys and girls. Welcome to tonight's vodcast on how to read a Punnett square. Last night you watched a vodcast on the basics of genetics and how to fill out a Punnett square. Now we're going to take a look at how to interpret it based on certain vocabulary words that you need to be familiar with. So let's get started. Okay, there are several terms that you need to know, and we're going to start with them one by one. So the first term that you need to know is the word genotype up here at the top. The word genotype refers to the genetic makeup of an organism. And when we take a look at the genotype of an organism, we always represent it by using letters. So genotypes are always symbolized by the use of the letters. So we can have capital X, capital X, capital X, lowercase x, or lowercase x, lowercase x. Now these letters can vary depending on the trait. I just used the letter X up here just as an example. So when we talk about genotypes, boys and girls, there are two types of genotypes you have to be aware of. You need to be aware of homozygous genotypes, which are the same as pure breeds, as we talked about last night. And there are also heterozygous genotypes, which are the same as the hybrids. So one easy way to remember what a homozygous genotype is, is remember the prefix homo means the same. A homozygous genotype refers to an organism that have two of the same alleles, just like the definition of our pure breeds stated last night. So for example, in the parentheses here, a homozygous genotype would include two dominant alleles or two recessive alleles. Heterozygous genotypes are the same as the hybrids. Hetero means different. If you take a look at the definition of them, heterozygous genotypes refer to organisms that have two different alleles. They'll have a dominant allele and a recessive allele. So if you can make these pairings together, homozygous with pure breeds and heterozygous with hybrids, this should be fairly easy for you to remember. Now let's take a look at some examples of how these things are expressed. So in this table here, we're going to list three charts and go over the three different types of genotypes that are available. We're going to refer to the green pea pods that we talked about last night. Now the first trait that we're going to look at or discuss would be a homozygous green pea pod. Knowing last night that the green color was dominant, we used the capital G to refer to the green color and then lowercase g for yellow color. If I'm talking about a homozygous green pea pod, I know the homozygous genotype has two of the same letters. Being that green is the dominant color, I know I have to use capital letters. So the homozygous dominant genotype would be big G, big G. Now if I were to be asked for a heterozygous green pea pod plant, remember heterozygous has two different alleles in it. Being that it's a heterozygous green pea pod plant, I know that is going to have a capital G in it. And because it has two different alleles, the only other allele that I can match up with it would be the lowercase g. A heterozygous green pea pod would be capital G, lowercase g. And then lastly, we could be asked for a homozygous recessive or a homozygous yellow trait. And remember, recessive traits are only shown as homozygous because if they're mixed with a dominant trait, they get covered. So for a homozygous yellow pea pod, we would have little g, little g. Now that we've discussed what genotypes are, we're going to move to the other term that you need to know, which is called phenotype. Remember, genotype refers to the genes or the genetic makeup of an organism, whereas phenotype, boys and girls, it refers to how an organism looks and behaves. So typically when you want to think about phenotype, you want to figure out or find out what the physical characteristics of that organism is. So for example, if you're given a genotype of homozygous dominant, big G, big G, then the appearance of that offspring or that organism is going to be its phenotype. Being that we know that big G, big G stands for green pea pod color, we know that the pea pod color is going to be green. Okay, so now that we understand what genotype means and how homozygous and heterozygous associate themselves with genotype and the difference between a genotype and phenotype, Let's take a look at how all this goes on in a Punnett square. Okay, so here we have an example, and the alleles that we're going to talk about are the eye color. So we're going to talk about brown eye color and blue eye color. So we have our two parents here with the different eye colors that they have, and their genotypes are represented underneath. The brown eye genotype is big B, little b, and the blue eye genotype is little b, little b. So we've set up our Punnett square here on the right. We put the brown eye alleles on the top and the blue eye alleles on the sides. I'm going to fill out our Punnett square as we learned last night. So we're simply just going to drop the letters down and bring them over. So remember, whenever you fill out a Punnett square, the capital letter or the dominant trait is always written first. You never put the lowercase in front. 
All right, so we'll drag this on over. We'll drag the dominant brown eye gene down and then the recessive blue eye gene over and then the recessive blue eye gene down and the recessive blue eye gene over. So here we have our Punnett square. Once we have our Punnett square filled out, we can now start answering questions based on it. First of all, the first question is, what are the genotypes of the offspring? So what that question is asking is what genes do the offspring inherit? If we take a look at our Punnett square here, we'll notice that there are only two types of genotypes in this cross. There is big B, big B, and there is little b, little b. Those are the genotypes of the offspring. Now the next question, number two, asks us, what are the phenotypes of the offspring? So what are they going to look like? Being that these two offspring have the dominant brown eye allele, they're going to have brown eyes. And being that these two offspring have both blue eye alleles, the recessive alleles, they're going to have blue eyes. So the offspring phenotypes are going to be brown eyes and blue eyes. Third, it says, what are the genotypes of the offspring that are homozygous dominant? So again, you need to know what a genotype is, and you need to know what homozygous means and also dominant. If we take a look, we're looking for the letters when they ask for genotype. Once we know that, we got to take a look at what homozygous means. So knowing that homozygous means the same two letters, I have to figure out which two letters am I looking for? Well, the word dominant tells us. I'm looking for an offspring that has homozygous dominant, which would be big B, big B. If you take a look at our cross here, though, what you'll notice is that out of the four offspring, none of them have big B, big B. So as a result, there are none. The next question asks us, what are the genotypes of the offspring that are homozygous recessive? So knowing again that homozygous means two of the same alleles and recessive means lowercase alleles, I need to find the offspring that has two recessive lowercase alleles. And that brings me to these two offspring over here in the Punnett square. The genotypes as little b, little b. And then lastly, it says, what are the genotypes of the offspring that are heterozygous? It doesn't tell me dominant or recessive because heterozygous has both. So I'm looking for the offspring that have both a dominant and recessive allele. And I know I have two of them here. The genotypes or the letters that those offspring have would be big B, little b. That's how you read and interpret a Punnett square when asked about genotypes, phenotypes, and homozygous and heterozygous genotypes. But there's another thing that you have to know or another skill that you need to be aware of, and that's using probability. So let's take a look at that. All right, you're going to be asked to determine the probability of an offspring of having a particular type of trait. So just so you know, and we clear up, remember that probability is the mathematical chance or prediction of an event occurring. The event that we are looking at is the appearance of a certain type of trait. Since our Punnett square only has four boxes in it, our probability is always going to be out of four, which is nice because it works out in quarters. Your answers are either going to be one out of four, or 25%, two out of four, 50%, three out of four, 75%, or four out of four, 100%. So this is the same cross that we had on the previous page, so I'm not gonna fill in the Punnett square as we did. I'm just going to show you what the answers are. So here's our cross. Okay, so the same offspring that we talked about before. Now let's take a look at our questions. The first question asks us, what is the probability of an offspring with brown eyes? So I need to figure out which offspring have the brown eyes. Knowing that brown eyes are dominant and the capital B is the dominant gene, I'm going to look for the offspring with the dominant genes. Well, that would be these two offsprings here. So that would give me two out of the four offspring of brown eyes. As we know, if we reduce two out of four, that gives us one half. So the percentage is 50%. And what's the probability of an offspring with blue eyes? Well, if we take a look at the other two offspring that don't have the dominant gene, we'll notice that they have lowercase b and lowercase b, and there are two offspring that do have that. Our fraction will be two out of four and 50%. Okay, so now that we've gone over and interpreted Punnett squares using phenotypes and genotypes and then determining probability, let's take a look at what it looks like when it's all put together. Here we have our practice cross and we're dealing with brown hair now. And we're not taking a look at eye color anymore. Again, we set up our Punnett square where we put one parent on the top. So big B, little b for the brown haired parent. And then little b, little b for the blonde haired parent. And then we fill out our Punnett square and these would be the genotypes of the offspring. 
So let's take a look at our questions here. They're asking us, what's the probability of a homozygous dominant offspring? Again, homozygous means two of the same alleles. Dominant means capital. So I need to find an offspring with two capital letters. I don't see any in the four that we have here. So my fraction is going to be zero out of four, which would give me a percentage of 0%. The probability of a homozygous recessive offspring, again, I'm looking for two of the same alleles, and it's a recessive trait, so I need lowercase, so I need to find offspring with two lowercase letters, and that leads me to these offspring here. So that gives me a fraction of two out of four, and a percentage of 50%. Then we get a probability of heterozygous offspring. So heterozygous has a dominant trait, and a recessive allele. So that leads me to these two offspring here because they have the capital and lowercase letters. So again, that's two out of four and 50%. And then it asks us, what are the genotypes of the offspring? Well, we wanna take a look at the different letter combinations. So I see I have big B, little b, big B, little b, little b, little b, little b, little b. So I really only have two types of genotypes here. And those genotypes are big B, little b, and little b, little b. And then lastly, they asked me, what are the phenotypes of the offspring? What are they going to look like? What is their hair going to look like? Being that these offspring have the dominant brown hair gene, they're going to have brown hair. Being that these two offspring have blonde hair genes and no dominant brown hair genes, they are going to have blonde hair. So as a result, the phenotypes of the offspring is going to be brown and blonde hair. Well, I hope that clears everything up for you guys. Now it is your job to go through and fill out the rest of the practice crosses in the back of this note packet. Good luck, give it your best shot, and we'll go over them tomorrow.